Hello everyone. In the last video, we have seen the circulation system of human beings. Now, what was the purpose of it? We have seen that the nutrients which we have got from the digestion were transported in the circulation process. And then it was done by the blood. Now, plants also need this transport of food and water to different parts of the plant. So, how do they do that? They do not have blood for this process. So, they follow a simple process which we call it as diffusion. Now, we have studied diffusion in our earlier classes, which is the movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration. Now, this diffusion process helps in transportation of food and water to different parts of the plant. Now, plants take up raw materials such as nitrogen, phosphorus and other minerals from the soil. Now, from the soil, it has to reach to different parts of the body. So, it has to be absorbed. Now, these absorptions takes place by the special part of the plant which we call it as roots. Now, the roots are in proper contact of the soil. Now, the soil has water, minerals and all the necessary contents which the plant require for the photosynthesis process. Now, for the small plants, we can say that the diffusion process is easy because the soil contacting parts and the chlorophyll contacting parts have less distance between them. But what happens when we see taller trees? Now, here the diffusion process will be slow because as the distance between the root and the upper tip increases, the diffusion process will slow down. So, there is another transporting system which the plants have developed in it. So, they have two different specialized parts that are called as xylem and phloem. Now, xylem is responsible for the transportation of water and minerals from the roots to the different parts of the plant and mainly to the leaves for the process of photosynthesis. And phloem is responsible for the transport of food from the leaves to different parts of the plant. So you can say that the xylem and phloem plays a major role in transportation in plants. We will see these xylem and phloem in details now. Now let's talk about the xylem first. The xylem is responsible for the transport of water and this is done by its special cells which are tracheids, tissues and vessels. Now this is done with the help of conducting system. Now the root, leaves and the stem form an interconnected continuous conducting channels which provide water to every part of the body. Soil is the only source from where it can absorb water. So the interconnected conducting channels help in absorption of water and transportation of water to different parts of the body. But the question arises, how does the roots absorb water from the soil? So we are going to answer this only. The, near the roots, in the roots, we can say that the special cells which are present there absorb the ions from the soil. Now when the roots have absorbed this ions from the soils, there is a concentration change between both of them. Now this concentration difference is removed by absorbing the water also by the roots. Now this what amount of water absorbed by the roots is in compensation with the difference between the soil concentration and the root concentration. The roots have now absorbed the water. Now through the conducting channels, it can transfer its water to different parts of the body. But the question again arises, it can transport its water to shorter plants. But what about the taller trees? The sufficient pressure is not developed from the roots to transfer the water to the taller trees. So here comes an another process which is involved in the transportation of water, which is called as transpiration. Now transpiration occurs simultaneously with the photosynthesis process, which is the food making process of the plant. Now when the photosynthesis occurs, you know that the stomatal pores get open. Now here there is a loss of water also. Now the amount of water loss should be compensated with the amount of water which the roots have. So this develops a pressure. 
Again, there is also evaporation of water from the surface of leaf, which creates a suction between the leaves and different parts of the body, which develops a pressure to pull the water in the upwards direction. So the water reaches to different parts of the leaves and parts of the plant. So in this way, it helps in the process of photosynthesis. We also see that the transpiration process have helped to transport the water from the roots to the highest point of the plant. The transpiration process also helps in temperature regulation. So you see that the transpiration and the photosynthesis process work simultaneously. So we can say that the rate of transpiration depends upon the opening and closing of the stomatal pores. Now let's see how the phloem works. Now the water has reached to the leaves and there it works with the chlorophyll and sunlight to produce the food through the photosynthesis process. Now the food which is produced here needs to be transported to different parts of the plant. Now this soluble food are transported to different parts of the plant is done by the process called as translocation and with the help of vascular tissues called as phloem. Not only food but substances like amino acids and other minerals are also transported in the plant for their proper maintenance. Now these sub other substances which are transported helps in the storage organs such as roots, stems, fruits, seeds and other growing organs. Now the translocation of food and other substances work with the cells like sieve tubes along with the companion cells in both the direction up and down. Unlike xylem which works on the simple physical forces, phloem does not work in the similar way. The phloem works or achieves its working by utilizing the energy. Now when the sucrose enters into the phloem, it utilizes the ATP energy. Now the ATP is a similar molecule which is found in the humans. Now, the function of both the ATPs are the same, storing of energy. Wherever and whenever the plants need the energy, it breaks down the ATP molecule. Now, when the sucrose is inside the phloem, the pressure inside the phloem tissue is more, so it leads to water to move in. The pressure here is osmotic pressure. Now, since the pressure here in the phloem is more, it needs to lessen its pressure by removing the food particles to the other tissue. That means it passes on its food to remove or to release its pressure. And in this way, it transfers its food material to different tissues. And this is how the food is transported to different parts of the plant. Like we can say in spring, the sugar stored in the roots and stems are transported to the growing organs such as buds of flowers and fruits so that they can grow properly. Now we have seen the proper functioning of xylem and phloem in detail. Let's keep two important points in our mind to remember why xylem and phloem are different from each other. Let's draw a table for this. Now xylem we know that only transports water whereas phloem transports the food. Now xylem works in only vertical direction that is up and down but the phloem works in horizontal and vertical direction both. So we have seen what is xylem and what is phloem, how transportation in plants occur. We will be seeing the process of excretion in our next video.